We're going to breeze through this really quickly. I just want to highlight some common algebra errors that we make all the time, things that I want you to really think through. Won't take us long to get through this video. We'll practice identifying some errors and how to correct those errors in homework for this lesson. First of all, dividing by zero. When we have a multi-step problem that might take us half a page to complete, sometimes we just go too quickly and we don't even recognize that we are dividing by zero. But you've been told over and over and over by every math teacher you've ever had that you cannot divide by zero. So make sure that you are not dividing by zero, regardless of what it might look like. Your numerator may not look like two, your denominator may not look like zero, but when you're actually in the context of the problem, it may be true that they're trying to get you to divide by zero. So you need to recognize that and recognize that that is not an operation that is mathematically possible. Miss parentheses are a big error that students make. When you're told to square a value, Many times students will just highlight the variable and square that. If you're told to square everything, you need to square everything, up to and including the coefficient that is in front of it. Don't forget that even if you have a negative in front, if you're told to square the entire thing, you need to square the entire thing. So be very careful. Parentheses are your friend here. The more parentheses you use, the better. That takes care of these kinds of errors. Subtract 4x minus 5 from x squared plus 3x x minus 5. Well, if you're subtracting this from that, you're going to have to distribute that negative value. And dropping parentheses is a big way of making sure that you're going to make that error. So again, I'm going to say over and over and over, parentheses are your friend. If you're told to do some sort of mathematical operation on an entire expression, make sure you're doing the operation on the entire expression, not just is the variable that it's next to. Okay? Another error is incomplete distribution. A student might distribute their what's on the outside of the parentheses with the first term and then they forget to distribute it over the second term. Uh, they also might distribute incorrectly inside of something that has another operation on it. So you need to expand whatever's going on inside the parentheses. We work on parentheses first. Remember PEMDAS is parentheses. So even if you have a multiplication, parentheses comes before that. So do whatever operation is in there and then do your distributive work. Assumed addition. This is a huge one that I see in my students, and it's I know it's speed, it's not ignorance, they know this. The exponential operation, that mathematical operation, does not break up over addition or subtraction. It only breaks up over multiplication or division. It is true that I can take either one of these variables and raise them to that exponent. That is a true statement. This is not a true statement. Not, not the same thing for addition or subtraction. So I know speed causes us to make some, sort, some of those errors sometimes, but you really need to slow down and make sure that you're getting everything done correctly. Canceling errors are big because of speed as well. The only way that you can cancel something in the numerator and the denominator of an expression is if that thing that you're canceling is common to each and every term that's in there. The correct way to do this is I'm going to factor an x out of the numerator. That leaves 3x squared minus 1. I have an x in the denominator, and there, there is my value of times 1, and therefore we say that those two can cancel. And what I'm left with is this expression. So again, I know it's not, I'm not accusing you of not knowing these errors exist, but I am going to tell you we're going to be doing enough mathematics that speed can cause you to make some of those errors. Additionally, students will try to cancel part of a term where they don't cancel, where they can't cancel the other. It is true that 3x cubed over x minus 
1 over x, this term can be reduced. There is an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator. That is 3x squared, but there's nothing that can be canceled from this term. There is no x in common, so we cannot cancel that. This would be the simplification that could be done. Uh, this is correct, there's nothing wrong with that, but don't reduce something that is not reducible. So again, like I said, speed usually is the cause for those kinds of errors. Here's a good one, and this one I'm going to say you've probably seen before, but maybe you've forgotten. Okay, let's, let's see, I think maybe, no. It, this is the reason why we need to gather all terms on one side of the equal sign, all variables on one side of the equal sign, because this is not an equivalent way to solve this kind of problem. If I solve this, then I divide both sides by x, not a problem. That leaves me with 2x equals 1 x equals one-half. Super simple to do. And in calculus, we're going to be doing a lot of this kind of work where we're solving simple equations for x values. But here's the problem. This is a correct solution, but it's not all correct solutions. Because when we did this, we didn't realize that we got rid of one of our solutions. If I factor the x out and solve this as a quadratic equation that it is, either x is 0 or x is positive 1 half. When we canceled that common term on both sides, we got rid of this solution. So be careful. I, this is a really big draw. Lots of students seem to want to do that. Uh, and I know you know better, but sometimes you forget. So solve quadratic equations as we've been talking about it. Um, it's easy to go in this direction. When you take the square root of a positive number, you're going to get a positive result. You're not going to get a negative result. It's, however, when you go in the other direction, where you're trying to figure out what you squared to get that positive result, remember you can square a negative number and still get a positive result. So be careful with that. Fractions, fractions, fractions. This is not really errors. This is more a uh, notation issue. And so I want to point some things out here on notation. There is a difference between 2 thirds as a coefficient to x, 2x over 3, and 2 over 3x. Now it turns out these two things mean the same. But this one means something completely different. I have a habit, just so that I don't make this mistake, of always popping my coefficient out front. Even if it's a fractional coefficient, I usually don't write my terms like this. Even though it's very clear that it's 2x over 3, this is still 2x over 3. When we get into calculus, popping that constant out front when we do our limits and derivative and integral work, that's really going to be a helpful habit to have. So let's, you know, let's do that. This could be written as 2 thirds times x to the negative 1, or 2 thirds times 1 over x. Just pop that coefficient out front. This is a big pet peeve of mine. When I point out a pet peeve, please don't do it. It needs to be very clear on your lined paper what you're doing. If you're telling me that you're working with the quantity a plus b over the quantity c plus d, I want to clearly see that. It's very different than telling me a plus b over c plus d. These are not equivalent expressions. This is a plus b over c plus d. Not an equivalent expression at all. So one last time, parentheses are your friend. Put them everywhere. So that's really all I uh, have to say about the common errors. There are other common errors that we make, and we'll see them probably in homework. But for now, those are the main ones I wanted to point out. So we'll do homework in class.